Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Fair Value Finder and today we are taking a look at Ferrari, ticker R-A-C-E. This stock is something that I am interested in. I've been asked to take a look at it and I'd like to see what's going on with this one as well. So we're looking at the scorecard right here and we're going to try and figure out what the price to pay for this stock is. We see that currently it's uh, $291. Uh, it's been as low as 183, as high as 300. Uh, for our projections, we're coming up with a fair value right around 227 and a half. Uh, with a margin of safety, we'd want to get in around 176, and we'd want to reevaluate around 229. So we can see that it's pretty well elevated at the moment. Free cash or discounted cash flows coming up with 142. There's not a whole lot of growth in the cash flows. Uh, definitely not a driver of the value here. It's mostly in those earnings. Earnings yield of 2.39%, a little low. Like we said, it's trading at a very big premium. Uh, we'd be looking for something around $14.50 in EPS to really make up for its current cost. And it's expected to get six dollars and 90 cents this year eight the fall cash flow yield looks really good though 11.75 percent up above their average 11.05 dividend yield not a huge dividend payer uh, i'd have to dig into what their actual dividend strategy is their payout ratio is about 29 percent, but their dividend payouts have been kind of all over the board so it looks like they just pay out a portion of profits in the form of a dividend once a year ROE looks really good, uh, almost 36%. ROI looks good as well, 11.6. And ROA, still good, 12.01. So they have decent returns. Uh, something above 10 is great here. And they're all there. Debt to equity does look a little high, uh, 1.99. We do like to see it under 1. But there are some things he, like the trend here. 2.67, 2.51, 2.11, 1 1.99. At the rate that they're dropping it, they could be getting a lot closer um, in the near future. So I'd say it's a yellow flag, not really a red flag. It's trending in the right direction and rather quickly at that. Gross profit last year came in at 48%. Average is 50. So it seems like they hold their prop their uh, gross margin right around 50%. Last year was a bit of a down year. Uh, net was also a little lower than typical, 18.3 compared to 18.45. But those are really good margins, especially for a car. Uh, so here we have three-year CAGR, two-year CAGR, and analyst projections where they're given. And we see that they're good at growing their revenue. Double digits across the board. Uh, picking it up more recently, they're expected to come in with 22% growth. And that's followed by 15% growth. So we're putting in our projections over here. Let's say they can sustain that 15 on average. They can have some years above, some years below. But what if they can come in with that 15 on average? Earnings per share. We see a very similar trend here. Jumping up to 35% this year. Dropped back down to 25 the following year. Cash flow growth. Uh, there are There is some funkiness here because of the way that the numbers land. Uh, cash flows. We see that 2020 was just a very low year for cash flows. And that's why we're seeing 115% growth from 2020. But they're rather consistent, right around 11% cash flow yield, uh, which is a good amount. Share count, they do buy back shares very slowly. Not the best thing at these elevated prices, but looks like they buy back. 0.6, maybe even more a year, uh, could just be a standard value. Assets are growing, uh, slowing down more recently, but still double-digit growth year over year, uh, 12 and a half down to 11.36. Liabilities, single-digit growth, uh, 9.26, slowing down more recently to 7.44. So for our projections, we're going to say assets right in between that 11 and 12 and a half. And liabilities between that seven and a half and nine. Uh, those are going into our projections. And then dividend growth. It doesn't seem like dividend growth is really their goal. Uh, it's just 
the fact that the company is growing, they're able to pay out larger dividends, but it picked up a lot recently. So we are going to say, what if it's 9% growth? I mean, if, if they're growing 15% in their revenue, paying out eight and a half, nine percent of that as a dividend, we'll see what that does for the company. And so ideally for the price that we currently see, we'd be looking for 1533 EPS, uh, 1457 in cash flow per share, and 9710 in net assets per share. Uh, so that comes down to 2.65 billion dollars in free cash flow and this last year they came in with between a quarter and a fifth of that and then assets per share uh, we currently have 7.7 .7 with 5.16 in liabilities so they are pretty far off on those two metrics and we're getting a lot of our value just from the earnings if you go strictly off earnings then Today's price might be a little high, but if you're looking at what they'd be coming in with next year, it's almost smack dab between them. So it wouldn't be bad to purchase. And then uh, we come over to our projections. So clearly it's at a high price right now. If you were to invest based on the fair value of the stock over the next three years, you'd be losing about 14%. And over the next five years, you'd be gaining 16% in the same time that the market is gaining 47 So. What if instead of buying at today's prices, we buy someone who bought at the 52 week low? What would they be looking at? It's definitely better. Uh, you're coming pretty close to the market on a three year basis and you're outperforming the market on a five year basis. Based off these projections, you're gonna be getting growth in the intrinsic value of the stock of nearly 14% a year, which is great when the market, we're looking for something at least 8% for a stock that we'd want to buy. So that is a very good number. It's just what price to buy. And it's looking like 190 and below is the ideal price on the stock. Some people were lucky and they got into that price earlier this year or within the last year, but it's definitely incredibly elevated right now. So I want to keep an eye on it. It's definitely a stock that I want to own, but it'd have to drop down to 190 for me to really start buying into it heavy. Because everything looks great. A lot of green flags, uh, one yellow flag would be the debt to equity, but that is getting cleaned up every single year. It's getting better. Uh, it goes on the watch list. It's definitely a stock I'm interested in, just not buying at the moment. Uh, I'd wait for it to drop closer to 200 and start selling puts on it to really uh, establish a good position for the long term. So I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like if you enjoyed the video. Comment what other stocks you'd like to see and subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything. And I'll catch you next time.